This recipe is for a garlic naan bread and it's made using a Greek yogurt so it's a really low fat naan bread and you cook it in a little bit of spray oil so you're keeping the calories really low. So in the bowl I've got 150 grams of plain flour and I've added into that two teaspoons of baking powder so that it rises so it gives a little bit more rise than self-raising flour should. I've taken a couple of teaspoons of the flour out after weighing it ready to sprinkle on the worktop when I'm rolling out. I've also added in for a little bit of extra flavour some black onion seeds also known as nigella seeds and they just give it a really nice sort of naan bread flavour and for such a small thing it really does make a big difference. I'm also going to crush one clove of garlic into that flour mixture. So I'm just going to crush it straight in, scrape it off with a knife. There will be another clove of garlic crushed to go in later after they've cooked it gets spread over with a tiny bit of butter or oil. And the other thing that's going to go in is a fat-free Greek yogurt. It should be, according to the recipe, proper Greek yogurt rather than Greek style because you get that thickness with this type of yogurt and you can see it's quite solid. If you've got any liquid, you pour that off. So that's going to go in and it's like making up a bread dough. You're going to mix it either with a spatula or I'm using a blunt knife and you mix it. Don't use your hands because obviously you're going to get very sticky. So you just mix it together until it comes into a dough. So I might take a little bit of cutting through and mixing right round to the bottom. Once you get it into a ball of dough, you can then get your hands in and give it a bit of a knead together. So I'm going to pause it now while I continue to mix that. Right, so that wasn't coming together by itself, so once it was fully mixed, I've got my hand in there and I'm just squeezing it with one hand to bring it together into a lump of dough. And you can use that lump to sort of mop up any crumbly bits that are coming loose. Make sure that you get it all. It should start to come off your hand as well. And leave the bowl quite clean. So I'm then going to give that a little bit of a knead just to give it a little bit of strength and stretchiness. Develop the gluten a little bit. You don't want it all sort of crumbly like a scone dough. There we are. I'm not going to over knead it because on the other hand we don't want it tough. But we do want it nice and elastic. So that will do. So the next thing I'm going to do is to divide that into six or eight, depends how big or small you want to make them. So I'm going to do it into eight today. So I'm going to use a palette knife, mark it to four, and then I'm just going to cut each of those in half. So I'm not going to do very big ones. Obviously, depending on the size of your frying pan, you could do them bigger. That it really doesn't make much difference. So I'm just going to roll them into a ball, drop them down onto the table. It's a nice texture to the mixture, it's not too sticky and not dry at all. I think, it, I don't know if I said, I also put a pinch of salt into the mixture. Right, so these are now going to get rolled out and the recipe does recommend that you roll them out between two pieces of baking paper. I don't know if that's going to be necessary, but I'm going to try it for the moment. So I'm just going to squash it a little and flour both sides. Obviously, if they're bigger, they would take a lot more rolling, but they should be quite quick and easy to roll out. And you can squash them down. What it does say on the recipe, again, is to use a bowl or a pan. So as I've got a frying pan, I'm going to go with that. And just 
squash it out and pick it out, reflower it a little and then use a rolling pin. So you can use a bit of judgment to see how big or small you want them to be. Get that sort of man bread shape, you're going a little bit oval. On my first one now I'm going to test and see the thickness. That's quite thin, it's thinner than pastry would be. Quite a, a nice elastic mixture so it's not going to break. I can pick it up and handle it quite nicely. So if you were making these, you'd get them all rolled out and prepped ready. I'm going to cook the one now and just to test my mixture. So my frying pan is now nice and hot. Um, I've got it on about three quarters of the way of the heat and I'm going to spray in a little oil. Now if it does land in one area you can just sort of use a silicone brush. Don't use anything plastic as it will melt and I'm just going to leave that heat up a little. So if you're feeling the heat of a pan just put your hand above it. Don't get too close obviously and just feel the heat rising. If it goes in and it's not hot enough it's going to take a while to start cooking. But they should take a couple of minutes per side anyway. Now straight away I can hear, probably too faint for the microphone to pick up, but I can hear that starting to sizzle. So I'm going to leave it for a couple of minutes. And when you think it may be done, what you can then start doing is just sort of lifting the edge up to have a look at the colour underneath. Obviously, it's not going to be done yet, but you can be prepared to do that. So, depending on the size of your frying pan, you could fit more than one in. I'm just going to do one to start off, and then I should fit definitely two, maybe three in. So, that's had about two minutes now, and I think it's ready for me to turn over. So, I'm going to use, again, when you're flipping something, it's handy to have two things, one to go underneath I want to stop it running away from you and flip it. So you can see it's got a lovely golden colour and it should sort of start to rise and brown in patches like a proper naan. And when that's cooked, you can brush it over with a mixture of chopped coriander. And I put some coriander in a small bowl and I'm just chopping it with the scissors. And you just keep going over and over that. That chops up quite fine. And... You can use a tiny bit of butter, or you could use a bit of oil, a bit of garlic, and just brush it over when they're cooked. So I'm going to move on now and start rolling out the others. And I'm just ready to take out that now, and the second side has browned a little bit differently there. Then it's also started puffing up, so I'm going to take that out now. Um, I'm not going to do the brushing with butter until I've got a few more to do it on. So while I roll out the others, I'm going to take the pan off the heat. Right, so I'm just rolling out the last one. Um, after doing a few of these, definitely flour both sides, baking paper over it, and just roll. To get the squash in it with a pan part, that was just a bit stupid, so I throw that on the recipe. And to peel it off even if it has stuck it will peel off because the non-stick baking paper so i've got them all now ready i'm going to sit them on the baking paper you can put them on a tray so you can have a clean down around and don't start cooking them until they're all rolled out and ready just trying to do two things at once you will end up if you let your pan get too hot what you're going to find is they'll cook too quickly and they won't puff up enough so once it's been on a while it will start to get a bit hot so i've just turned it down a little they should take a couple of minutes per side but they do start to speed up so as you can see with the second ones second lot i've done I'm not worried about the shape of them, but you can be a little bit more careful if you want to. 
and that's it so i'm gonna get my um butter mixture ready now okay so they're all cooked and the last thing now is i've got my coriander mixture could be a bit finer but i'm just gonna sort of blob it on so it's a really really tiny amount of butter um that could be left out if you didn't want to do it you could put some of the fresh coriander actually in them instead if you wanted to you could use some dried coriander that's the sort of recipe you can mess about with a little bit you can do stuffed naans you can do all sorts of different variations of it obviously if you're doing this part it's nice if you're doing it while it's still hot and it's nice if you're doing it just before serving so you just sort of blob it on If you left these plain, you could also use them as a mini naan bread pizza base. And obviously, if you've got a big enough pan, you could do much larger ones. So there they are, just ready for a curry. <laughs> 